So here we are for Meet the Agent, and we are with Johanna Clark, who is a a member of our team here. And Johanna has sold or pended over a million dollars every single month this year since February. She was previously employed in asset management on Wall Street. She owns her own investment properties. She does house flipping. And she was licensed originally back in July of 2016, joined our team back in January of 2020. Since then, in 2019 to 2020, she has doubled her business and has consistently sold over $10 million in real estate every year. We are psyched to have you not only on our team, but have you here with us today uh, to help um, give some perspective on what it's like to be a very successful agent, mom, and how you handle your business. Thanks, Mike, for the intro. Yeah, well, it's well-deserved. As a mom of four kids under the age of 11, how do you manage their school schedules, their sports schedules, keeping up with the house, and running an extremely successful real estate business? Um, You know, not going to lie, it's it's very busy. There's not a lot of downtime, uh, which is okay because when you have a job you like to do, you don't mind fitting it in when you can. Uh, I do keep a very strict calendar, so I live and die by my phone calendar, and if it's not in there, I'm going to miss your appointment. Uh, So we have a family calendar, I have a work calendar, uh, try to merge those two to keep everybody on the same page. Um, And we do try to keep some consistency in the schedule, uh, so I know the hours and days I can set aside for work, um, and the times that are are blocked up for the family. Hmm. Um, I also have a very supportive husband who, you know, takes over pretty much all the sports for me. Shout out to Coach <laughs> Clark. Uh, and of course, if any of my clients are friends watching, you know, um, I will take my littlest one on appointments with me. And those days are getting a little bit harder, but so far uh, managed to just juggle everything. Well, you do a heck of a job, obviously, as we know. Um, We mentioned that you were in New York City prior to real estate um, in asset management as a bond trader. And um, how would you look back at that and and how has that helped your real estate career? Sure. So, uh, you know, I started working on Wall Street in 2006 or 2007. And long story short, I ended up working for one of the big bailout companies during the mortgage crisis. Uh, So I have a a pretty good macro look of the housing market and saw it at its height and its uh, very, very steep decline and collapse. Um, So naturally interested in the housing market, how mortgages affect that, um, and just took it to a micro level when we moved up here. So I really enjoyed watching the market and how it changed. and I also had a natural interest, but you know, at the same time, I, I do have a natural inclination to run numbers, look at cash flows, look at trends, uh, and follow technicals like that. That's a huge advantage of, of being successful, I think, just because I know how all that plays into this business, and I know in our early talks, I was always impressed with that, and I, I definitely think that has helped kind of analyze different elements of this business, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people generally buy houses on a monthly basis. They look at your monthly numbers. They want to know if it's a good investment um, or if they're buying an investment property, how to look at it differently. And entering the investment world has is definitely newer for me. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister did introduce me to real estate investing, and I thank her for that. She's been a great partner. Uh, but those are totally different perspectives. You you cannot yes. look at investment properties like you do your primary residence. And that is another feature that has helped me invest in real estate and helped my investors. Nice. For the mom out there, and, and I, I speak to these people a lot, and I'm sure we both do, right? We run into the person that says, hey, I like houses and I like people. And they say, I'm thinking about getting my real estate license. For that person out there who's thinking about it, and they got you know a household, kids, all that, what would you say, what are the attributes or characteristics that they, sh- they should possess that would allow them to be successful in this business? Sure. So you definitely have to like houses, Uh, I think it's important to see the attributes of 
properties, but you know, houses are just a fraction of this business. You have to be someone who wants to be a matchmaker, who is a problem solver, who is inquisitive about people's goals and, you know, the problems they might be having with their current properties. Um, You have to think outside the box. You have to have a good database in your head and you have to be willing to work. Uh, You know, this is a sales at the end of the day. So if you're not working on your sales skills all the time, you know, only an interest will take you so far. Yeah. So you have to be comfortable talking to everyone. Real estate is something that touches everyone, almost everyone, and everybody likes to talk about it. So, you know, you have the opportunity to talk to anyone in your life or anyone you meet and make good introductions that way. But know what you're talking about because they'll remember what you know and what, you know, they might be interested in. Mm-hmm. What would you say is your favorite part about being a real estate professional? Um, Commissions, no. (laughs) Uh, Obviously this, you know, this is my first straight commission job ever. And I think it's great that you can turn it on when you want to, uh, turn it off. Hopefully, you know, that day does not come for me because uh, I don't see why you would, but you can, Um, you know, it's been good. It, it's very results driven and you can really see your hard work unfold. And it might take a few months, it might take a couple of years, but uh, it works. And if you keep at it, you will get great results okay. and it will snowball. If you weren't in real estate, what would you be doing? Now that I'm in sales, I don't think I can leave, but I think recruitment being a recruiter would be a good job i think it's it's very similar you're placing people with the right spot uh and finding the right people for certain people you know for certain companies so i I think that would be a natural fit for someone who's in sales and real estate and that looks really interesting to me Hmm. don't worry mike oh yeah (laughs) What 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 is one of our most memorable sales would you say Good or bad? <laughs> Pick it. Whatever's going to, yeah, yeah, be interesting, I guess, right? <laughs> so one of my favorite <laughs> sales, uh, I'll start with the good, is, is definitely the uh, beautiful horse farm I sold out in Dwaynesburg. Um, I was able was to you. place the buyer and the seller, and the seller and I met under harder circumstances, and we were introduced by another real estate professional. Um, didn't work out with them, but I was able to help her, and that was the ultimate goal was to work on one of her other properties that she had trouble selling and I was able to do that. And a year or two later, she said, it's time to sell the big property. And it worked out beautifully and it was a really nice transaction. Nice. Um, for bad, I've got a few stories. Um, <laughs> we all do. <laughs> you know, there's always yeah. going to be bad transactions. Those are the memorable ones. Those are the ones you, you learn something say, and learn, you... Yeah. You never forget it, and every transaction brings something new that you learn. So this is an evolving career, and unfortunately, it's just time and transactions that build your skill set. Yeah. What would you say, uh, what's your outlook uh, for the market? That's a tough question. So we all know we're battling inventory in this area, the rest of the country, it's it's really frustrating for a lot of people who might be looking for that starter home or that downsize home. And I do see prices, you know, continuing to rise. They might not spike 10% a year, mm-hmm. but um, they're definitely not going down. As long as we still keep seeing eight to 10 buyers for every house, you know, which is very typical Mm -hmm. on some of these houses. Um, I don't see any prices falling. I think interest rates, you know, a spike will, will shock the market for a month or two, but then it will, it will settle. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, if interest rates decline, forget it, the market will go bonkers. So I guess my one piece of advice is if, if you're looking to buy real estate, 
do it now. Um, if you don't do it soon, it might be years before you can enter the market. Okay. Well, my piece of advice as we wrap this up would be for anybody who's looking for an agent who's resourceful, can find stuff off market, uh, knows the market, and just mixes it up better than any agent I've seen in a long time. Uh, you want to call Johanna because she can definitely help you with that. And if you're looking to get top dollar, she knows the inventory better than any agent I, I've come across. Um, appreciate you jumping on here. And um, yeah, if, uh, I hope this was helpful in terms of introducing all that Johanna brings to us as a team and the market. And um, yeah, appreciate you, you joining us for this. Thanks, Mike. It's been a great three and a half years. All right. Have a good day, guys.